Hi everyone, we are going to build a RGB version of a seven segment display, which as you can see here, we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven different segments. Normally each one of these would be an individual LED, but I am going to, I have no idea if it's gonna work, build an RGB version of this where each segment has got four RGB LEDs inside it. And I'm going to be using the WS2812B Intelligent Control LED Integrated Light Source. Now, just to be clear, um, my understanding is that NeoPixel is a trademark name for this product by Adafruit. I have no idea if this product exists, or I believe it exists just in general, but Adafruit's version of their product is called NeoPixel, and I'm going to just use the term NeoPixel from here on out just because that's what I'm used to, and I apologize if I'm <laughs> infringing any trademarks or copyrights in doing so. So, this is what a NeoPixel looks like, a four pin version. And it's basically a package that has inside it a little IC and three LEDs, a red LED, a green LED, and a blue LED, hence the RGB. The actual chip inside of the IC controls those and also allows these individual packages to be addressable through this data in and data out chain that uses a PWM signal, which thankfully the Adafruit graphics library or NeoPixel library handles for us. So we'll deal with that in a future part of this video. But for now, what we're going to do is use these NeoPixels to build a PCB in EagleCAD that is reminiscent of a seven segment display. I'm assuming this is going to work. I have no idea if it will or it won't. Just a very quick rundown on how these are joined together. We've got a string of NeoPixels that are connected to each other and all of them have a VDD, a voltage coming in, generally a five volt source, but it can be anywhere between 3.5 and five volts. Um, I have successfully run these before on 3.3 volts, but ideally they're looking for 5 volts. So we've got our VDD out coming in all the way through the top, as you can see here. We have our ground at the bottom, and then we've got a data in that goes data out, data in, that are chained all together. And then using software on something like an Arduino board or a Adafruit Feather or any type of microcontroller board, you'll be able to program these uh, packages individually to make each one display its own particular color just through this single pin coming through. You can also see that there are some capacitors and basically they're just used on the voltage sources coming into the NeoPixels. You don't need it on every single NeoPixel, but you need a few of them going through. Uh, they're just there to help regulate the voltage and cut off some of the unwanted frequencies in case there's any type of power spike coming through. If you consider that it might only be a five volt source coming through, but when you string a whole lot of these together, they can actually draw quite a few amps. And so you need to have a pretty beefy power supply coming in to be able to drive them and need the capacitors for just some basic filtering. Okay, so let me just go back to where this image came from. And that is the Adafruit's website, their NeoPixel Uber Guide, which is a pretty amazing guide. As you can see here, they've got schematic versions of all their different NeoPixel rings. And if I just go all the way back to the top, there's lots of software reference on here. As you can see, this is what some of the boards look like. And then you've got all the different RGB colors that you can display. Go all the way back to the top, you see some nice fancy pictures of all the different, there's the more Lady Ada herself, all different types of amazing cool things you can do. So let's get into it. We're going to go straight to schematic view of Eagle and I'm just going to jump right in and start putting this board together. I'm going to try to do this as quick as possible. I'm going to try to waffle as little as possible, but sometimes it's just going to be a little bit of waffling. Okay, first thing we want to do is grab the package for the NeoPixel display. I'm using the Adafruit library to do this and they've got a couple of versions on here. I'm going to want to use the narrow version and I'll explain to you why as we're going, but as you can just quickly see that the pads on the narrow version are narrower, which means we can get the actual NeoPixels closer together. So let's bring one of these in. Let's place this down here. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in so we can see. So we've got our VDD, our ground, data in, data out. So what do we need to get all this working? Okay, we're going to need a capacitor, as we mentioned. So I'm working in 0805. I find that uh, 08 of 5 is, is about as small as I can get comfortably that I can both solder and use solder paste to put them together without having to strain my eyes too much. I'm going to use a non-thermal version of it. So I'm just going to put that in and stick that over here for now. I also need to get a connector. I want a what do we want? We're on a 1x3 connector. Wow, that didn't help much. That's con. Maybe I didn't like the double N. 
Wow. Really find uh, it a struggle to use the filtering in Eagle sometimes, but we go so we connect a one by one by three con three. One by three that's what we need. We want a 0.1 inch standard layout, 1.3. Cool. Need two of these. We need one here and we're gonna need one over here. You can see right now I'm in move mode and if I right click on my mouse I can also rotate while I'm in move mode which is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna stick that over there for now. Okay. So that's basically what we need to start with. So we've got one NeoPixel. We're going to hook this up, try to get our spacing right. I'm gonna to try to do this as quick as possible. I'll talk as we're going. First thing we need to do is get our voltage and our capacitor connected and our voltage coming in. And what I should do is get this nice and close to start with so I don't have to worry about taking too much space. And we need a ground coming in. Let's pull the ground from over here. We're going to need a data coming in. I'm just going to stick that to here for now. And I'm going to pull this capacitor down to ground. So you can see they're joined here, but these ones aren't joined, so they're actually passing through each other. And data out over to here. Okay, very important to go and name all of your traces to start with. Okay, I'm calling that data. So I'm calling this one data. Yes, I'm going to connect them. This is going to be our ground. And as you can see now, when I click on this to name it, all of it is highlighted because it's all joined together. And this is going to be our, I'm going to call it VCC, just because that's what I'm used to using. So as you can see now again, I click on it and it's all highlighted green. It shows you that these are all connections are now VCC, they're all joined together. Okay, as I said, I want to do this as fast as possible because I don't want this to be a three hour video. And it's a lot of work to do, but I also want to get you to have a good understanding of what I'm currently doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab this. I'm going to make sure that everything's named correctly. So this is called LED1, perfect. This capacitor, as you can see, is called C1, which is perfect. I'm going to grab this, and then I'm going to go to my copy. I'm going to do a copy group, and I'm going to paste this three more times. One, haven't worked out yet how to keep it in paste mode, but that's okay. One, two, three, okay. There we go. So we've got four NeoPixels. And quickly join them together. I'm gonna to join that to that. And it's gonna ask me, do I wanna connect them together? What, what do I want the name to be? Now, because I copied this, it's changed all our names to be data one here, data two, data three, VCC one, ground one, so forth. I'm gonna make them all go back to data. In this case, I'll join all these together. Well, I'll call it data one, and I'm quite happy for these to be named like this. For now, that this was this going data three, that's fine. Okay, I need to now connect all of my grounds together. Now, I am in no way an expert in Eagle CAD. I, I'm a hobbyist electronics person. I know what I know in Eagle. I've built PCBs. I've had them manufactured. I've built microcontroller boards inside Eagle. So I've successfully used Eagle for a little while now, but I am in no way an expert and I'm sure there are lots of things that I do wrong. And there are lots of things that you might be seeing right now that I could be doing better. And if that's the case, please feel free to let me know in the comments because you know, I'm learning, I'm always learning. I'm, I'm happy to learn better ways of doing things. Okay, so We've got four NeoPixels next to each other right here. Now the reason we've got a group of four, and I'm not extending it any further, is because a seven segment display has bars of an LED, as we saw here, the bars. And what I'm gonna do is use four NeoPixels in each bar to represent a line, kind of like you can see on these ones here. So rather than being a solid line, it'll be, made, it'll be a line made up of four NeoPixels. So that's why I've got a group of four right now, and that's gonna be a segment. So I'm gonna now copy all this, and start duplicating it out. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, one more. It'll give us our seven segments. Okay, I didn't lay them out very nicely in terms of spacing. I'm currently capturing at 5K on my Mac at full screen, so it's a little bit chuggy sometimes. So, 
there's our seven segments. Now we need to make sure that again we've got everything named correctly, otherwise we won't be able to join everything up. We need to make sure that these are all called VCC. And yes, we want to connect them. Same with our grounds. Okay, so all our grounds and all our VCC should now be connected. So if I click on one to rename it, all these VCCs are highlighted now, the light green. And if I do the same thing for the ground, click it to rename it, it shows that they're all the grounds are now connected to each other. Now we just need to make sure that all these data are connected because these segments are going to be connected in a linear fashion. So segment one over here or segment A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So this is currently called data three. So we want to make sure this one is called data three. And that will connect those two together. So if I click this one here now, you can see both sides are connected. Doesn't matter what the insides are, because they're all connected to each other, that's fine. I want to take our other jumper, which we're going to connect down the bottom here. Now, did I get all of these? Let's just quickly check them all. No, 17 and this one here. I missed one. So this one needs to be 17. Thought I might have missed one. Now we want to get, we're going to use pin two of these jumpers to connect to our data. Oops, we're going to connect this pin two. We're going to connect our ground pin three, and we're going to connect our VCC to pin one. Okay, now we need to do the same thing on this side. Okay, what we should do before we go any further, is save. Now, I'm going to call this in. I'm going to call this out. Now, one thing I should have done before I duplicated these segments out, I'm just going to go back and make one or two changes. The first one is we've got a capacitor in between each one, and I think we don't need so many capacitors based on just my my opinion. So obviously we've got 28 LEDs now, seven lots of four, and we've got 28 capacitors as you can see, all the way up to C28. But I'm going to go through now and remove this last lot of capacitors on each section because I just feel like we've got too many. It's going to save some components and it's going to save some soldering. It's going to save some board space. And I just really feel like, you know, we've got enough voltage filtering happening. We could probably even get rid of every second one, but I feel less comfortable with that. Okay, the next thing we need to do is, just before I forget, is we need to add a resistor in. So we need to add a resistor on the data line. It's just recommended by the Adafruit Learning Guide. So I'm going to not ignore their recommendation. So I'm going to go 0805 resistor. Now I'm in Australia and in Australia we I think we everyone here uses the European versions of everything but I am going to use the US version. Here we go. And the reason I want to use the US one is I like the squiggly lines. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to stick this actually over here for now. I'll move it back in place in a moment. Okay. So there's our resistor. So what I'm going to do is actually remove this line here for the data. I'm going to put this in place. I'm going to connect it back up again. Okay, we have our all of our VCCs hooked up, all of our grounds hooked up. We've got our capacitors going between VCC and ground for each of these NeoPixels, and we've got all the way through going back out to another pin header. That looks pretty good. Time to save. Okay, let's move over to the board layout side and let's have a look at the mess that Eagle would have given us. Okay, here we go. We've got a whole clump of stuff here, as you can see, and it's placed them all over the place, all over the shop, as Eagle does, and it's obviously placed everything outside of our board layout range. Eagle 
comes in different versions, different licensing versions, or from a free version all the way down to a, all the way up, I should say, to a enterprise commercial version. And the main differences between them are the fact that the, the free version and the version I'm using, which is a standard version, gives you a limited board size you can work with. It does not allow you to place parts outside of the board range. It's as simple as that. But all of these parts right now are outside my board range because my board range starts at this origin point and it goes vertical and to the right. So this is my board range in here. All these parts out here are outside of the board range, which means if I was to, for instance, go move these over here, I can't. Standard edition of Eagle can't perform the requested action. Some objects extend outside the allowed board area. I need to suddenly get my hand over here and place these inside my board range so I can start working with them. I don't understand why Eagle can't, by default, stick everything on the top right-hand side, at least when it's first designing a board, when it's first placing parts in. I understand that you don't want it placing things on top of your parts when you've got a board that's already in product, you know, already being laid out and you add an extra part on the schematic side, but this is the first time I've opened up the board and it should just place everything in the right spot for me. Not laid out correctly, but the right, the right spot meaning that everything should be on the movable side of the board. I understand that they want to limit board size, that's fair enough, but they shouldn't be removing our ability to move things on and off the board and rearrange things. I think that's just a, an unnecessary hampering. Okay, this is a just a starting dumping of stuff. Okay, let's get straight into laying this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna run through this as quickly as I possibly can. Just this up into here. Whoops, I went too far to the left, which is a problem. And then I'm gonna put this just over here, just for now. Okay, so we're looking at putting a seven segment display layout together. And as I mentioned, we're gonna use four NeoPixels for each segment. So the first thing we wanna do is lay out the top, which is segment A. So one thing to let you know is I'm using a grid size of 12.5 mil. And this is something I've just worked out before. This is me doing it live, but I had a bit of experimentation with what size the new pixels are and how close I want to get them together. So the first thing I want to do is just obviously, we've got one place down here. I want to get my first row working. And so what I want to do is get them all in the same grid line. So this one is. Now, these are going to all be laid out the same orientation. One thing I don't want to do with the NeoPixels is to have them all rotate at different angles on different segments, because I'm going to forget I'm going to put them on the wrong way around when I solder them on. It's just easier if everything's oriented the same way. So I'm making everything top left where the ground is on the top left-hand side. And what that means is that for the top rows, the, the middle and the bottom horizontal rows, I have to worry about pads being too close together. If it was vertical, I don't, as you can see here, the pads aren't touching each other or getting close to each other. I can get these NeoPixels quite close together. But in the case of the horizontal bars, I want them close enough that I can have them look like a line and not just individual spaced out dots, but not so close that I can't either get a solder tip into them or just end up with bridges across them. And so I've already worked out that as close as I can get them is about five good units apart. So this spacing here, so as you can see here, there's five grid units, one, two, three, four, five apart. They're far enough apart, I think, that they're not gonna bridge. They're far enough apart that I can get an iron tip in to tweak them if I have to, but they're not too far apart that they're gonna look like individual LEDs, especially when it's, it's zoomed out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just get all these next to each other. So I'm gonna get these, keep them on the same line, get them all five apart. That looks good, and I'm just gonna get my resistor out of the way. Okay, I'm just going to get these caps kind of in line. We'll, I'll talk more about the layout of these shortly, but just for now, I'm going to get them on. Okay, so that's our top segment. Now, the, the way the segments work, as we saw from the, the picture before, that we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, and G in the middle. I, I could either look at doing F or I could look at doing B. So I might look at B right now. So we've got LED 1, 2, 3, 4. The next one we need is LED 5. So we need them to go in sequential order the way they're hooked in. That way they can be addressed correctly. So you can see down here we've got five. I'm just going to grab them. I'm going to right click, move group, and get them roughly into the right spot. 
Okay, and now I'm going to manually go through and place them. Now, I need to get these this whole layout working symmetrically. So what I want to do is I want to get a diagonal happening here. Something that I, I do sometimes just to help me with the layout of a board is I'll go to a, a layout that isn't being used at all. So I'll use, for instance, B test, right? Something that I know I'm not going to use again. And what I'm going to do is draw some lines as guides. Line going through those neopixels. Okay, and what I'm also going to draw is a 45 degree line from this point. And I don't know how long I need it, but I'm just going to do just a fairly long one at 45 degrees so I know where I can line up the next NeoPixel. So I know it's going to be somewhere along this 45. So I need to work out from corner to corner how much space I need. And I reckon about four grid units diagonally down. Okay, so now I need to vertically line up all of these. So how much spacing do I need? Well, obviously I can get them a bit closer because I don't have the pads in the way, but I don't want them too close that they'll look too different to the horizontal. So I think I'm going to do about there, about four grid units. Looks pretty good. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, I'm just going to get my caps in place. Okay, so there's two segments done. So what I need to do is just extrapolate down. While I'm on this test layer, I'm going to just put a line straight through the guts. I'm going to need it quite long because I need the next segment to go through. And what I'm going to do on this side is do another 45. It's definitely struggling to do a 5k capture. I'm not surprised, it's a lot of pixels as capturing this full screen mode. We need a place. In this case, it's going to be the second last segment. Let's go and make sure I'm in move mode, and I'm going to place that just over here. I'll rearrange it in a second to make sure it's fine. So, oops, 22. Grab them out of order. It's so 23. So, remember, we're going backwards here because obviously the loop is going this way around and so to there. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Let's get these lined up correctly. And wow, look at that. One, two, three. Almost got that lined up perfectly. Okay, so this is going to be moved over one. And then we want a gap of four. Gap of four. Okay, time for some fast forwarding. Okay, and they need some massaging, but you can currently see that things are starting to take shape. It's looking pretty cool. Now what I'm doing with my caps is I'm putting them around the outside, kind of <laughs> like they're a drop shadow. And that seems a bit weird, but um, I figure that we want the everything obviously to line up, all the neopixels to line up, and I don't want to intersperse the caps between them to offset them too much and I want everything to kind of be uniform you know to kind of look symmetrical in a, in a kind of offset way if that makes sense so I'm going to lay out all these caps in such a way that it kind of looks more like a or like a drop shadow around them so when all the pixels are lit up everything will be nice and uniform get that out of the way get that out of the way okay so as you can see, everything's kind of almost neatly lined up. I just need to work out some more spacing. What I'm going to do is turn this test layer off now. I don't think I need it anymore. I'll just do everything by eye now. So I want this one here. It's the easiest one to start with. I want that to be diagonal four away. And then this one here. So one, two, three, four. 
So this will be diagonal here. So that's where that'll go. So technically these should all, if they're five, two, three, four, five, this should line up nicely. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Look at that, perfect. Okay, and we go on this one up. One. This should all, one, two, three, four, line up nice, perfectly. Look at that. Nice and symmetrical. Wow, here's a seven segment display made by rows of four neopixels. Now that is cool. That's nice to see this coming together. It's, uh, it's always great when you see your idea actually start to materialize, because I've obviously visualized this in my head for a little while, but have not seen it in a schematic or a board view. So it helps to see this like this now and it makes me feel a lot better about the potential of it working. Okay, so we obviously need to put some board dimensions together and we need to route the board. I think what I will do is start off with some basic routing just on this top section here and then I will maybe accelerate, like do it all offline and wait till we get to the end and I'll show you the finished product because it's going to take a while. One thing I do want to quickly say though is I, I think it's super important that to, to have really nicely designed PCBs, I mean or of beautifully laid out boards rather than just clumping things together. And one of the things that I love, and I know a lot of people don't, but I do, is I love having or seeing things on 45 degree angles. I don't know why, I just do. So I'm going to place these on a 45 degree angle with the ground at the top and place, I don't know where it needs to go yet, but you know, maybe about there. And the same with this resistor. I'm gonna put this on a 45 degree angle. Why? Because I think it's gonna be cool. Yeah. I mean, obviously we need to play with the spacing and stuff. But I like that. I do, I do. If you consider that this board, I might even you know do angles around the board for the PCB design. I think that looks really cool. If I just right click, that would have to be negative 45. If that's 90, we want to, hmm, 135 degrees. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Grounds on top, grounds on top. VCCs on the bottom, right? That would line up perfectly. So you'd have wires coming into the left, going all the way through the board, and then coming out the right, going into the left, into the next one. That is very cool. Okay, so let's just do a save. I'm just going to do start doing some routing, just to let you know what I'm going to be doing here. So I'm currently using a, a trace width of 12, and my drill sizes for my vias or vias, however you pronounce it, uh, is going to be 29 or 29.527, yada yada. So, and I'm I'm basing all this on using the the Eagle Design check rules from SparkFun. And the reason I'm doing that is because I use PCBWay for my PCB manufacturing and they have much better tolerances than what Eagle by default lets you use. And the, the closest thing that they recommend is the Spark Fun. So I'm going to use that and be able to get things nice and closely together. So let's get routing. Now my plan is to use a top layer ground plane. So I'm going to not actually route any of the grounds. I'm going to worry about that later, the ground plan. And I'm just going to route all of the VCC and the datas. So the first thing I'm going to do is just run through this chain. So data in, goes to data out, goes to data in, goes to out, goes to data in, goes to out. As you can see, it's going to be super simple. Okay, and this data out is going to go to data in over here, and we'll worry about that one in a moment. Now we need to do VCC. So, and then we want to go around. Okay, so VCC, and then we also want to go to our caps. 
Remember, we're just going to route the VCC side. The ground will get picked up from the ground copper plane that we're going to add. Okay, so that's one set of NeoPixel, one segment routed. So we've got data in, which goes through our resistor, which then goes data in, out to in, out to in, out to in, all the way chained across. We've got our VCC going around all the way through and coming off onto our capacitors, and then we've got our ground, which is going to get put on the ground plane. So we're going to go through and hook all of those up, you know, position everything nicely, and I'm going to put a board layer around it, and then I'm going to not do that on video, I'm just going to come back in a moment with this finished because it's going to take probably hours of me fiddling to get this all right, and I don't think you should need to suffer listening to me waffle on while I do that. So, back shortly. And we're back, and here we are, a finished board. I'm glad I left and came back now because this took me about five or six hours to do because I kept finessing and finessing and finessing and ripping up and finessing and ripping up and finessing and I thought okay well I'm glad I didn't put you through that but as you can see it's the same board that we did before I've gone through and put some values on the capacitors um, I've routed it exactly I just continued on what I was doing it's exactly the same except I just pretty things up a little bit um, I've got my board outline working. I've cut the corners off. The reason I've got a slightly different side on the, on the top left is A, to show which way is the top left, kind of like you'd have a, you know, a marker on an IC or something. And just also because I needed that extra space in here for the resistor that we don't have over here. And the other thing I added was some drill holes over here and here and on the top left just so these boards can be mounted to something. Um, I, I feel like they're small enough that, you know, uh, there'll be a bit of give at the bottom, but, you know, with a 1.6mm PCB, I, I think they'll be strong enough that, you know, you know, unless you want to put your hands on it to snap it, I, I think that, you know, putting a standoff or something behind these and drilling these on, I think they'll be sturdy enough. So, just a, a quick rundown of what I've got on here. Uh, as you can see, everything is, is laid out exactly the same. I, I didn't change the layout at all, but um, I just went through and played with the position of the, the caps. I stuck with my 45 degree angles, my inputs and my output headers. I did some labeling on there. What I actually did was I labeled them on the reverse side just because I was running out of space. So as you can see here, there's ground, D, I for D in. Um, I've got V in over here and then I've got ground, D out and V out. And they're the flip side because I just flipped the board over. Um, also stuck just to, you know, my Neo 7 segment Thing on there. Revision 2018-1. Yes, it is 2018. I cannot believe it. Unexpectedmaker.com. So I ended up putting a copper plane on both the front and the back just because it was easier, especially because once the routing went through, some of the ground areas were, were closed off. So I ended up doing copper on both sides. So I've got, as you can see here, just some wires that are going through ground plane to join the front and the back here and there. There were a couple of routing areas that I had to actually go to the back of the board to bring across the data out for LED24 all the way into LED25. I needed to push that behind. I didn't really have to. I guess I could have squeezed it in. At the time when I was building the board, I had the, the gap here much smaller. I don't like having traces too close to the components if I don't need to. So that was there. And then obviously coming through here. I always planned on making it a, a, a two-layer board. I'm quite comfortable working with two-layer boards. Uh, all the boards I've made in the past have been like that. And then I've just put some ground wires kind of evenly around the board. Uh, you can never get too many wires going through to join the ground planes. Obviously, you don't want the signal to have to travel from one side of the board to the other side of the board. So there it is. So if I go and fill these in, you'll see that, there you go, there's our fill for the ground at the on the front layer. And there's the fill at the back on the back layer, which makes it a bit easier to see everything. You can see the items that have been routed through. And there's our Neo 7 segment board finished. So now what I need to do is export the Gerbers and send it off to PCBWay and get it built. I normally just hand solder paste my surface mount boards myself and then place all the parts and stick them in my special PCB toaster oven. But uh, in this case, I might actually order a stencil. For this, I've never worked with a stencil before. And there's obviously a lot of pads here to do by hand and maybe a stencil might be a great way to go. Or maybe I'll end up just doing a version with a stencil and a version without a stencil. Might make for interesting videos. So my plan is the next video will be when I have these boards in my hand and I can start putting them together and I'll do that live and watch me crash and burn. But that's okay, I'll do it live 
and we'll get a, a working board happening. And then once I've done that, I hope to put together a third video, which will be doing the software side and getting all of this put together. Now, obviously just getting all these LEDs working in software is gonna be super easy. There's plenty of code out there for that. But what I need to do is actually have all of these segments work in groups and each group be addressed the same way you'd address a normal seven segment display. But obviously be able to drive multiple of these joined together without having to multiplex like you do with a normal seven segment display. So it's gonna be an interesting process. And maybe if it all works and it actually doesn't blow up on me, I might then do another video in the future of actually turning this into a clock that I can hang in my house. And I can stare at my wonderful work and be proud of myself, even though no one else understands how much effort was involved. So there we go, here's the finished board. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, maybe learned something. Please leave some comments. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And of course, you're welcome to do a thumbs down if you didn't. But if you do, please leave me a comment as to why. Thanks very much and take care.